So this is it, the amazing and super exciting English tense review with all our characters that we will, uh, that will be helping us today. Now, let's jump right in and start with our favorite, the present simple. It's simple, it's present, it's pretty easy. This is the one where we say he works at BMW. Um, so we're going to look at how to use the tenses and how to use this tense. And we will also look at when to use these tenses. So these are two different parts of our tense, that's a side form tense uh, review. So present simple is very simple. I work, you work, he, she, it works. We work, you work, and they work. That's so nice, right? In German, it's ich arbeite, du arbeitest, er arbeitet, wir arbeiten, ihr arbeitet, sie arbeiten. Oh, this is, it's so much to remember. And in every language, it's usually very complicated, right? In Spanish, yo trabajo, tu trabajas. Oh, um, every language has all these different endings, but in English, work, 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 work. Then he, she, it works. So I like to say in English, the main verbs, like work, are very lazy. Die sind sehr faul. They don't like to do a lot of work. So we just have that little s, that's it. That's all we have. And of course, many of you know the rhyme, he, she, it, das es muss mit. It's great. It's really good to remember that. Now, these verbs, these main verbs in English are so lazy that if we have a negative sentence, so eine Verneinung, or a question, then the main verb says, mm -mm, ich mach gar keine Arbeit. Wenn wir eine Verneinung oder eine Frage haben, das ist mir viel zu viel Arbeit. Ich mach gar nichts. Ich nehme kein S, nichts. Also, ich brauche ein Hilfsverb. Right? So the helping verb comes and says, yes, sir, what can I do? And this, the, the main verb says, all right, helping verb, you do the work. You take the S, you take the negative, uh, the not, you ask the question. So if we have a question, for example, sie arbeitet nicht bei BMW, then the helping verb takes the S, the helping verb takes the not, and it's she doesn't work. Man sieht hier, das, das Hauptverb work ist sehr faul, nimmt kein S, nimmt gar nichts. Same if we have a question. So in German, Ja, auf Deutsch stellt immer das Hauptverb oder, oder meistens das Hauptverb die Frage. Also das kommt vor immer. So also arbeitet sie. So arbeiten kommt zuerst. Arbeitet sie bei BMW. But in English, that's too much work for the main verb. So the helping verb comes to the beginning. And we have does she work at BMW? And then we have our short answers. Yes, she does. And no, she doesn't. Um, so there we go. So when do we use the present simple? We use it for things that are in general. So for example, she never eats cheese. It's, it's not really today. It's not yesterday. It's not tomorrow. Well, it's, it's all, it is today. It's tomorrow. It's yesterday. It's, it's just general. Generally speaking, we use that present simple tense. We use it for routines. I wake up at 7.30 every day, 7.30 a.m. <laughs> right? So anytime we talk about these routines, something that I do every day or I do every week, or I do sometimes, then present simple. Also for facts, for example, lions eat meat. That's a fact, right? It's true yesterday, today, tomorrow. Again, it's, it's also general, so it's, it's the same as in general, in a, in a way. So that's when we use the present simple tense. These things in general, routines, facts. I, say, I like to say with the present simple, there's, there's no moment, really. There's, it's, it's, it's something that's, that's true more generally. So we, can, we, can, we have signal words that we often use with the present simple that help give us a clue that we want to use the simple present tense. So for example, when I say every, so every day, every week, every year, 
every month. Always, often, frequently, usually, sometimes, seldom, rarely, das heißt kaum, normally, generally. So these are all good signal words. And when we use these words, then we can know that, aha, uh -huh, this is probably the present simple tense that we want. All right. So. Let's see. Oops. All right, so. That's it, that's the present simple tense. Easy, right? Piece of cake. Uh, now you have to remember it. So now let's look at the present continuous tense. This is the one with ing. We are waiting for our friend. Now, the present continuous tense, or the word continuous in English grammar is the same as progressive. So sometimes this is called the present progressive, and sometimes the present continuous. It's the same, same idea. So this is with ing. So let's first look at how to use the present continuous. Here it is. I am waiting, you are waiting, he, she, it is waiting, we are waiting, you are waiting, they are waiting. Easy, right? So here we always have the helping verb. And it's very important that we have the helping verb. So I, I made up a new rhyme for, for, for this. Uh, es reicht nicht aus, ing allein, here's for B. Muss auch mich mit rein. All right, it's a bit cheesy, but uh, there we go. We have to have, we must have the helping verb be when we, um, when we have the present continuous tense. That's very important. We always have it, positive, negative, and question. So let's look at the negative sentence. She isn't waiting for us or you aren't waiting for us. Uh, and a question, is she waiting for her dad? So again, the helping verb comes to the beginning. And our short answer, yes, she is. No, she isn't. Now, just so you know, we use our helping verbs in many different ways, not just for the negative in question. In English, we really love our helping verbs. So. Another day, we can talk about how important these helping verbs are and the different ways that we use them in English. We use them much more than you use helping verbs in German. So it's very, very important to remember these helping verbs. Um, no, um, all right. So when do we use the present continuous? Well, it's pretty simple. We use it for things at the moment. So for example, I can say, shh, the baby is sleeping right now. Please be quiet. So this is, this is a, we have a moment now. This is, this is at the moment. So that's right now in this very second, the baby is sleeping. But I can also say something like, we are renovating our kitchen right now. Now, maybe in the exact moment, I am at the restaurant or I'm at work or I'm, I'm not in my kitchen, but the idea that I am renovating my kitchen is maybe a, a week or two weeks or something like that. It's still a moment. It's still right now. It's not general. It's something that is specific for right now. So we can have a small moment at the moment, or we can have a bigger moment uh, over two weeks, over a month, any, anything that is not general. And then we also use present continuous sometimes when we talk about future plans. So for example, Sam is flying to Dublin tomorrow. So these are things that are in your calendar and you have this plan. And in that case, we need to have the time. When will it happen? In this case, tomorrow. So our signal words, at the moment, right now, today, this week, and so on. Anything that has right now, uh, the idea of right now. And then if it's for a future plan, we need a future time. So that is a signal word. Yeah. So now we need to look at the big exception to, this, to these rules. And that is with the stative verbs. Now, stative verbs are very important. These are the verbs that we do not typically use in the continuous 
tenses. So uh, we use in the simple tense. So the verbs are, for example, these verbs that have to do with possession. So eigentum, right? Have, own, possess, lack, consist, involve, include, contain, and so on. Um, some of the verbs with cognition, like to know, to believe, to understand, and so on. So again, the idea here is we say, uh, oh, I know the answer, not I'm knowing the answer, even if it's at the moment. Same thing with verbs like mean and think. Now it's think in Sinne von meinen und nicht denken. Denken ist normal. Meinen, think, is, uh, is a stative verb. Uh, or for, uh, then we have the verbs with emotion. We say, oh, I love this, this movie. Or I, I really like uh, creme brulee, or I strongly dislike broccoli. Right? That could be in general, but it can also be at the moment, and it's present simple. Also with our senses, these are the passive senses, where we say, oh, I, I hear something. I smell smoke. Hey, I see you. Mm, I can taste vanilla. Um, um, or I can say that, uh, uh, yeah, I feel good. Also with appearance. So for example, you can say, hey, that looks good. That, looks, that dress looks really good on you. Or, hey, that sounds wonderful. That sounds like a wonderful idea. Mmm, that smells good. Or, mmm, this tastes wonderful. And some other verbs, like the verb to be, exist, cost, so for, uh, and then the verbs that have a star uh, can sometimes be used in the continuous form in certain contexts. So that's a bit deeper than we have time to go into today. But just so you know, there are some exceptions to our exceptions. That's English. <laughs> All right, so here's some examples. For example, I say, I want a donut right now. I want a donut, not I'm wanting a donut, that's wrong. So even though it's at the moment, we use the present simple with the state of verbs. Another example, he agrees with me, not he's agreeing with me. She believes in God, not she's believing in God. That dress looks good, not the dress is looking good. So you can see there are some verbs that, the, the state of verbs that are very, uh, it's uh, a little bit different than the other verbs, the good news is, I think most of these verbs, you already, you already know from feeling that it should be present simple and not present continuous. Most people have a feeling for this already. But if you're not sure, then you can, then you can develop that, um, that feeling with, with these, by looking at this chart and, and internalizing these state of verbs. All right, so now, Let's look at the present simple and the present continuous side by side. And that will help us to see the differences. So for example, first I say, normally I get up at 7.30 every morning. It's present simple, it's a routine. But this week I'm getting up at 6 a.m. every day or I'm getting up at six o'clock every day. Maybe there's a special reason. Um, I have a special project or something. So you can see in the first half of the sentence, it's a routine, it's, it's something in general. And in the second half, it's something that's at the moment. It's this week, this week is special. So I normally, I get up, but this week I am getting up. Different idea, but in one sentence. Now we say, you know, Mike works as a freelance programmer. In general, he works. But at, and at the moment, he is working for MFG Solutions. So he's a freelance programmer. So sometimes he works for one company, sometimes for another company. And at the moment, he's working for MFG Solutions. So that's at the moment. Elle is eating her lunch right now, at the moment. And then I can comment generally. She always eats her lunch, or she always eats lunch at 1 p.m. That's a routine. Here's a good one. I'm looking at the picture. I'm looking at the picture at, right now, at the moment. But I don't see Waldo. Or auf Deutsch Walter. Oder? Er heißt Walter. I don't see Waldo. So that's a state of verb. 
that's the, the big exceptions that we just talked about. I am looking at the picture, that's an active verb, but I don't see Waldo, that's a state of verb. Or I'm listening to the new album right now, at the moment, I think it sounds great. Again, here's a state of verb. So we say, it sounds great. All right, so I hope, so that's the, those are our first two tenses, and I really hope that uh, that, uh, that can help you a little bit with those tenses to see them in a different way and in a helpful way. Now, now that more people are here, I, I want to tell you that this, all, all the, 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 the visual slides that we look at today will be available for you um, to uh, receive uh, from us. I will give you the email address where you can, uh, where you can request um, this chart with all the verbs, uh, sorry, all the tenses uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the presentation. So stay with us and you can have that, uh, you can get a chart with all of these with all of these slides that we're looking at today with all the, with an overview of the tenses. Um, all right, so let's jump back in. And now we will go to the past. Now the past simple is great. It's really easy, I think, in English, generally speaking. The meeting started late. Easy, right? And when we, it's really easy to use because look at this. I started, you started, he, she, it started, we started, you started, they started. Hey, really easy to, to remember, right? The, the bad news is here, there are many irregular verbs, as you know. You remember this from school. Eat, ate, uh, for example, drink, drank, take, took, go, went, come, came, see, saw, and so on. There, there's a, there are lists that you can find online in books. Uh, the good news is many of these verbs you already know because they are very common, um, like eat and drink and take. And some of them are very similar to German as well. So that's, that's also good. So that's the only hard, I think that's the only real hard part about the past simple. Everything else, it's really simple, really easy to use. Now, here, our helping verb is, because it's a simple tense, our helping verb is do, but do goes to the past and becomes did. So again, if we have a negative sentence, for example, he didn't start the fire, right? The main verb, also das Hauptverb start, sagt, ja, das, wir haben eine Verneinung. Das, das ist mir viel zu viel Arbeit, ich mag gar nichts. Ich sitze einfach rum und ich, ich, ich gehe nicht in die Vergangenheit, weil, weil es eine Verneinung ist. Also, hilf mir, komm. So the helping verb comes, he says, yes sir. Und das Hauptverb sagt, ja, du gehst in die Vergangenheit, du nimmst das not und ich bleibe hier, wo ich bin, in der, in der Gegenwart. And the helping verb says, jawohl, he goes to the past and we have, we didn't start the fire. So only one verb goes to the past, and that's the helping verb. Same with the question. Did you start the fire? And then the short answer. Yes, I did. No, I didn't. So that's the answer. And you can tell Billy Joel who, who started the fire. All right. When do we use the past simple? Now in German, you, the past simple, you don't use the past simple too often for most verbs. Like, you don't usually say, ich aß, gestern aß ich ein Sandwich. You'd say, gestern habe ich ein Sandwich gegessen. Unless you're telling a story in a book or something. But in English, we use the past simple all the time. All the time. So, these are for things that are in the past. So, any past event. For example, she, she ate pizza for breakfast yesterday. Breakfast pizza. Ugh. Or in storytelling. Harry Potter stole the map, the Marauder's map. Anytime we say when something happened, we probably need the, the past simple. So for example, in 1992, that's when I went to Disneyland. Or even the word when. So I can say, when did you go to Disneyland? When did you go? Oh, I went in 1992. 
So our signal words for the past simple are when, ago, this one's really important. Ago is almost always the past simple. That's, that's, that's a really easy one. Yesterday, last week, last year, last month, and so on. And then a time in the past, 1992, uh, in the 1980s, anything like that. So that's the past simple. All right, now, of course, you, you see this, this pattern. Uh, we go from the simple tense to the continuous tense. And here we have the past continuous. We were sleeping when. So how do we use the past continuous? Very simple. I was sleeping, you were sleeping, he was sleeping, she was sleeping, it was sleeping, and so on. Um, so it's the same as the present continuous, but our helping verb is now in the past. So we have was and were and then ink. So here it's all the same, 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 same. She wasn't sleeping. Was she sleeping? Yes, she was, no, she wasn't. So you get, you get the idea. We have this pattern with the helping verbs. Every tense follows the same pattern. So das Muster bleibt gleich bei jedem Zeitform. When do we use the past continuous? Well, interrupted action, this is so, uh, Unterbrochene Geschehen or unterbrochene um, Handlungen. So, for example, the baby was sleeping when the phone rang. So, you can see we have the past continuous, the baby was sleeping, and then the past simple, when the phone rang. So, the phone rang, that's past simple. Uh, das unterbricht, the baby was sleeping, right? That's the interruption. So, uh, the, the past continue, past continuous, das ist das, was im, schon im Gange ist, als unser past simple uh, das unterbricht. Um, it also, we also use it for two or more parallel actions. So for example, Sam was driving while Paul was reading. So these are two things that happened simultaneously, parallel in parallel. So our signal words here, are as, while, and when. Now let's look at this. This is kind of interesting. We say, for example, we were sleeping when the thief broke into the house. So here the word when is before the, the past simple part. And the past continuous has nothing. Or I can say it like this. When the thief broke into the house, we were sleeping. Same idea. When goes with the past simple, and the present, uh, the past continuous has nothing. We were sleeping. Or I can say as or while. So as we were sleeping or while we were sleeping. It's the same. As we were sleeping, a thief broke into the house. So as or while go with the present, the past continuous. And then in that case, the past simple has nothing. No way. The thief broke into the house while we were sleeping or the thief broke into the house as we were sleeping. So that's it. It's a little bit tricky, but if you practice this, then it, you can get it very, really easily, I think, um, because it's very consistent. So that's the past continuous. Now, the cool thing about the past continuous, let's see, is it's like 3D, 3D English, I like to say. So when we look at these side by side, then we can see the 3D effect in our storytelling. Now, if you go to a 3D movie, you have a background and a foreground. You have, you know, the, the pirate ship in the background, and then you have Johnny Depp, you know, Captain Jack Sparrow with his sword in the foreground. That's the main action. Captain Jack Sparrow is the main action, and the pirate ship is the background. So the same thing happens in English grammar. Here we have the main action. When Steve arrived at the party, that's past simple. That's our main action. That's our Captain Jack Sparrow. The guests were singing happy birthday. That's the background. Uh, that's the past continuous. Das, was uh, schon im Gange war. Zu der Zeit, dass die Haupt, uh, das Haupthandeln uh, geschehen ist. Another example. Santa Claus brought us presents. Past simple, main action. While we were sleeping, 
past continuous, background. Das war schon im Gange, als Santa Claus kam. We can, we can mix it up. Kate was watching a horror movie when the man knocked on the door. That's the main action. Or as Forrest Gump was riding the school bus, past continuous, he met Jenny, past simple. That's the main action. He met Jenny as he was riding the school bus. Or while the ship was sinking, the string quartet was playing music. So these are two uh, past continuous actions side by side. So they're happening at the same time. So it's past continuous, past continuous. All right. Now, I want to take a, uh, into, uh, take a, uh, a moment here to talk about um, the best way to um, the best way to to practice these tenses, um, and one of the best ways to practice these tenses is with a note card or or a post-it note. So what you can do with the note card is you can write here, for example, present simple. You can write down uh, an example sentence. He works at BMW, and you can write down. The, the maybe a signal word or something like in general or routines. So write that down on the card, write down your example sentence, and then put the card in your pocket. And then every time you feel the card, every time you put your hand in your pocket or something, you look at the card, make your own sentence, create your own sentence using these rules, using the, path, the, the present simple or whatever tense you have and repeat it to yourself and do it in the negative form in the question form. And do this a few times every day. And then after one week, it'll be easy, no problem. So then write down a new, a new tense, past simple or, or present continuous. Or you can, you can um, write down past continuous, uh, sorry, uh, present continuous and present simple and make two sentences side by side, like the ones that we looked at. So that's the idea is that you practice this regularly, that you create your own sentences in your head and repeat them back. Uh, or put it on the same thing on a post-it note and then put the post-it note on your computer so that you, you, every time you look at it, you create a sentence with that tense and you practice it. Or put it on your, on your bathroom mirror or your car radio or your refrigerator. And every time you see it, make a sentence. Think of it in your head. This will help you so much to internalize these tenses so that when the time comes to use the tenses, you're ready to go. It just comes out. You don't have to think about it. Because in the moment when you are, um, um, when you are um, uh, in, a, in, import, in an important meeting or something, you don't want to be thinking about these rules. You need to be thinking about the meeting. So internalize this in practice. It's like building a muscle. You just have to repeat, 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 and then it comes. All right, so let's jump back in. So now we're going to get to the more complicated tenses, the more tricky, the trickier tenses, starting with the present perfect. Now again, here, if it gets too complicated for you, just don't worry, stay with us um, and get what you can. Remember, you can always come back to this later. You can watch this on YouTube. You can uh, have these charts to look at on your own, in your own time. So present perfect is that, uh, or the present perfect simple is that tense with have lived, have seen, have eaten, have done. So for example, I have lived in New York City before. Now this is very different in some ways, it's very different from the German, ich habe gelebt. Sometimes it's the same, sometimes it's different. That's why it's tricky. So let's take a look. First of all, using it is pretty easy, actually. I have lived, you have lived, he, she, it has lived, we have, you have, they have lived. So helping verb is have, same rules, 
with the negative, she hasn't lived here long, and the question, has she lived here long? Yes, she has. No, she hasn't. So all of that is the same pattern that we saw with the other tenses. Now, when to use the present perfect is a little bit trickier. So here I'm going to give you first tips for using the present perfect. The first tip is then FSJ. And we will look at that in just a moment on the next page. So Ben FSJ is a way for you to remember that there are three different ways to use the present perfect, three different uses. And each letter in Ben FSJ is a different signal word. We'll look at that in just a second. The present perfect always has a connection to the past and a connection to the present moment. So this is really important. Always a connection to the past and a connection to the present. Do not use the present perfect for a story. Mm -mm. Never use this if you are telling a story. Not good. And never say when. That's our big rule. Never say when something happened with the present perfect. So those are your tips for use. If you can remember just this, it will help you a lot. It will help you a lot. So our signal words are these. Before, period, because it because it means before now, we'll look at that in a moment, ever, never, for, and since, just, already, and yet. So now let's take a closer look at these. Here it is, Ben, F, S, J. These are our three different uh, uses of the present perfect. So these are the signal words, before, ever, never, for, and since, just, already, and yet. Uh, now, uh, well, let's, let's start with the first one. Present perfect number one, I call this the collection of experiences. So for example, I have been to Mexico before. That's a little bit like in German, ich war schon mal. Ich war schon mal in Mexico. Ever is, a for, is usually for questions. Have you ever eaten crocodile? And that's a, a, a bit like German, jemals. Hast du jemals Krokodil gegessen? And then never, she has never seen Star Wars. That's a little bit like the German, noch niemals. Sie hat noch niemals Star Wars gesehen. So that's a, that's a little way to help you remember uh, the, the, when to use these, the, the present perfect for these things. So the important thing is here, we do not say when it happened. I'm not telling you when I was in Mexico. I'm not telling you when I ate crocodile. I'm not telling you, uh, you know, when I saw Star Wars. I just want to know, have you been to Mexico before? Or have I been to Mexico before? All right, so that's really, really, really important. Do not say when. If you say when, use the past simple, not the present perfect. So that's it. We'll look at this more in detail in just a moment. Um, so yeah, okay, so never use um, when, ago, yesterday, last year, in 1982, and so on. All right, then we have present perfect two. This is Zeit. So anytime you have the word Zeit in German, then in English, you want the present perfect tense with for or since. So for example, Elizabeth has been queen for 68 years. Or Elizabeth has been queen since 1952. So for is for the time period, since is when it began. Now we can say when something began if we have the word since, that's okay. But we cannot say when something happened overall. So Elizabeth has been queen for 68 years or since 1952, she's still the queen. It's still true now. So, in, so here we have it again, Elizabeth has been queen since 1952 or for 68 years. And in German, you would say Elizabeth ist seit 1952 oder seit 68 Jahren Königin. So here the ist in German is, uh, is the same as has been in English. So this is very, very different than the German. And the seit is since or for. So that's it. That's your formula. So that one's tricky. It's tricky to remember because it's so different from the German, but the rule is very simple. When you have Zeit, Deutsch, 
also das einfache Gegenwart plus seit auf Deutsch ist dann Present Perfect plus for or since in English. There you go. And then we have Present Perfect 3. This is the open situation, where something where the effect is now. So for example, my package has just arrived. This is etwas, was gerade passiert ist. Also just heißt gerade, etwas, was gerade passiert ist. My package has just arrived. Or I've already eaten lunch today. This is like the German schon, aber in Sinne von schon, also abgehakt. Also ich habe schon Mittag gegessen, ich muss nicht mehr Mittag essen. Das habe ich schon gemacht. So I have already eaten lunch today. And then yet is, have you eaten lunch yet? So that's the, uh, or, or that's the question. Or for the negative, she hasn't eaten lunch yet. So this is like, hast du schon Mittag gegessen? Or sie hat noch nicht uh, Mittag gegessen. So that's the, that's the equivalent in German. But we don't always use the signal words here. Sometimes we have no signal words. So for example, we must take the lift because I have hurt my leg. Now, um, this, uh, this happened in the past. So das, das Verletzen meines Beines ist schon geschehen, aber es tut mir jetzt weh, immer noch. So die, die, die Wirkung ist aktuell, ist jetzt. Und deswegen muss mir den Lift nehmen. So we have, something happened in the past, the effect is now. So for example, it's raining and I have forgotten my umbrella. So das Vergessen ist in der Vergangenheit, ist aber jetzt relevant, weil es regnet. Or something happened in the past and the situation is still open. So for example, Stephen King has written many books. That means Stephen King lebt noch und könnte noch mehr Bücher schreiben. So sein Leben ist immer noch offen. Das ist die offene Situation in diesem Kontext. But here I would say Karl May wrote many books. Weil Karl May ist leider tot und er kann keine Bücher mehr schreiben. Also seine Situation ist jetzt vorbei. Das ist geschlossen. So I have to use the past simple. So. Ich weiß, das ist manchmal ein bisschen schwer zu merken, aber das, das kommt mit der Zeit, mit Gefühl und, und das ist auch wichtig, dass man dann ganz viel Englisch hört, so, so viel wie möglich. Also in, 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 bei ähm, Fernsehserien oder Filmen oder auch äh, in, 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 wenn sie Arbeitskollegen oder, oder was auch immer man hat, wo man ein bisschen mehr Englisch hören kann, so kann man das besser ein, ähm, einbringen in, in, in den Verstand. So, let's take a little bit of a closer look at this. And the queen will help us out here. So, let's look at present perfect one again. This is our collection of experiences, before, ever, never. So, there's a connection to the past, remember, and a connection to the present. So, for example, we have a horse. And the queen can say, I have ridden a horse before. Okay. She can say, I have, been to, I have been to Australia before. I have met Ronald Reagan. And I have eaten sushi before. So here, if we put them on the timeline, we can see that she is speaking now. And all of these things happened in the past. So that's our connection to the past. The horse, Australia, Ronald Reagan, sushi, it happened in the past. But she, the queen has these experiences now. So she can say, diese Erlebnisse gehören mir jetzt. There they are. And this is important. Ich sage nicht, wann die passierten, nur dass die passierten. So that's the important thing with present perfect one. Wir sagen nicht, wann die passierten, nur dass die passierten. So I have been to Australia before. I have eaten crocodile before and so on. That's it. And never say when. Do not tell us when it happened. Just tell us that it happened. All right, now the queen will help us with present perfect two, Zeit, for and since. So again, we have a connection to the present and a connection to the past. We have our timeline, it is now. And Elizabeth is queen right now. And she started to be queen in 1952. So she can say, I have been queen since 1952. Or she can say, 
I have been queen for 68 years. And she's still the queen. Ich bin immer noch Königin. Now, did you know the queen has her own website? Yeah, she does. www.royal.uk. And it still exists. So she can say, I have had my own website since 1999. Or, I have had my own website for 21 years. Meine Webseite ist immer noch im Internet. So she still has this website. So our connection to the past is these things began in the past. Our connection to the present is that they are still true now. So very important. Now, big, big Achtung uh, here. For most action verbs, meaning not the state of verbs, we use the present perfect continuous tense. So for example, um, with, with the state of verbs, we use the present perfect simple. I have been, or I have had, or I have, I have loved her for many years. I have, um, this, this, uh, this city has existed since the Roman period. But for action, most action verbs, we use the, the present perfect continuous form when we have Zeit. So for example, she has been wearing that dress for 30 years, or I haven't been sleeping well since the accident. So um, we'll look at this more in just a moment, but that's, uh, that's something that's very important, that for most verbs, actually, for most verbs, we use the present perfect continuous tense uh, when you have this Zeit situation. Also nochmal auf Deutsch, wenn man Zeit auf, äh, auf Deutsch hat, also die einfache Gegenwart plus Zeit, dann nur für die State of Verbs ist das Present Perfect simple. I have had or I have been. Um, für, um, für alle anderen Verben ist das dann Present Perfect Continuous und das ist dann I have been wearing or I have been sleeping. So, all right. Now let's look at Present Perfect 3, the open situation. The effect is now, just already and yet. Again, connection to the present, connection to the past. We have our timeline. It is 2 p.m. It is today at 2 p.m. Wow, time flies. And let's say we're having a conversation with the queen about lunchtime and breakfast time. So here she might say, I have already eaten lunch. There it is in the past. I've already eaten lunch. And she can use the present perfect, weil es immer noch lunchtime ist. Es ist nur zwei Uhr. Das man kann, könnte noch Mittag essen. Es ist nicht geschlossen. Now, if she talks about breakfast, breakfast, um zwei Uhr ist Frühstück schon vorbei. I didn't eat breakfast. So it's past simple. But breakfast time schon vorbei ist, es ist nicht mehr möglich, Frühstück zu essen. Right? If, wenn man Frühstück um zwei Uhr isst, isst, dann ist es kein Frühstück mehr, es ist Spätstück. So, it's, it's, breakfast time is closed, so she says, I didn't eat breakfast, but I have eaten lunch. Now, if we look at today and yesterday, if that is our situation, then the queen could say, uh, if, if the queen is talking about Prince Charles, she might say, I haven't yet seen Charles today. I haven't yet seen him today, but I saw him yesterday. So yesterday, well, I haven't seen Charles today. Es ist immer noch today. Es ist noch möglich, Charles zu sehen. So it's present perfect. But yesterday is vorbei. Past simple. I saw him yesterday, but I haven't seen him today. Now, you know the queen loves her corgis, these little dogs. And she might say, I have just taken the corgis for a walk. There they are. And so, and so I need to rest now. So the corgis, she's, she's already finished with taking the corgis for a walk, but the effect is now. Sie ist jetzt müde, weil sie raus mit den, mit den corgis war. So present perfect. Now, just so you know, here we can also use the past simple when, it, when the effect is now and if the thing is in the past and finished. This is not black and white. This is really not black and white. So don't, no stress about this. I know it's complicated, but no stress, no stress. All right, so our connection to the past is that the things happened in the past. And our connection to the present is that the situation is still open. It's still lunchtime, it's still today. Uh, the queen is tired from taking the corgis for a walk. 
So that is our effect uh, now. All right. So now let's look at the present perfect continuous. This is the one with I have been learning Kung Fu, which we, we mentioned a moment ago. So how to use it? Again, same pattern, but this time we have two helping verbs. Very important, have and been. So if we have a negative, I say she hasn't been learning Taekwondo. And the question, has she been learning karate? And the answer, yes, she has. No, she hasn't. We only need one for our short answer, but sometimes we say, yes, she has been, or no, she hasn't been. So that's also possible. Now, when to use it, we have, first of all, the Zeit, what we talked about just a moment ago. Uh, and it's on that page. So for example, this is something that began in the past and it is still true now. For example, we have been waiting for 30 minutes. We are still waiting now. Or with action verbs. Again, these are the non-stative verbs. Um, so for example, the dog has been sleeping in the kitchen since last week. So sleeping is an active verb, that's an action verb. It's not a stative verb. So we can say the dog has been sleeping, not the dog has slept, um, not, not normally. Again, the signal words here are for and since, it's the same, just the sight of Dutch. So that's use one. Now use two is a little bit um, trickier. If this is too complicated for you, then just don't worry about it. You, you don't really need this, but you should know about it in case you hear it. So the second use is when we want to comment on the evidence of past action. So what that means is, for example, you see these kids, they're covered in mud, and I can say, oh, the kids have been playing in the mud all day and now are very dirty. So the kids are covered in mud because they were playing in the mud. So we can say, we see the mud, they're dirty now. So I can say the kids have been playing in the mud. Or I can say, it has been snowing a lot lately. And you can see in the picture, there is a lot of snow on the ground. That's the evidence. So der Beweis von vergangenes Geschehen. So there's snow on the ground because it was snowing. It has been snowing a lot lately. So that's the other way that we use the present perfect continuous. All right, past perfect. Now, this, this is actually pretty easy. Um, this is, we had visited Tahiti once before we moved there. So this is very similar to the present perfect, but it's, it's had instead of have. So everything here is the same. Helping verb had, she hadn't visited Paris before, had she visited France before, yes she had, no she hadn't. Same, same pattern. Tips for use. So here we connect two or more moments in the past. So for example here in our example sentence, we had visited Tahiti twice before we moved there. So we moved there is the first moment, that's past simple, but then the, what happened before the past simple is the past perfect, we had visited. So it's the same uses as the present perfect. So everything we looked at with the present perfect is the same for the past perfect, but here with the past perfect, we, we no longer have a connection to the present moment. Instead, we have a connection to a moment in the past. That's the only difference. So Ben FSJ is the same, same thing here. And this is very useful for stories. We use past perfect very often in stories. Our signal words, are the same as with the, the present perfect, but this time before would be before a time in past, not before right now. Um, this, is, this is the tense in German, that's the, uh, the plus quam perfect. Um, so if you, and it's actually more similar uh, in German and in English um, uh, than, than the present perfect in the present perfect in German. So we'll do a quick um, uh, example of the past perfect here with, with Nate, and the monkey in India. So this is the stupid story of Nate and the monkey. All right, here we go. In December of 2019, Nate visited the famous monkey temple in Jaipur, India. He had never, or he, sorry, he had been to India once before, but he had never been to Jaipur. Had he ever met a monkey? Yes, he had. Nate had been in India for two months, or since October, 
before he visited Jaipur and met his monkey friend. When they met, Nate had already eaten lunch, but the monkey had not yet eaten lunch and was very hungry. In this picture, the monkey had just jumped onto Nate's shoulder and Nate gave him a tasty peanut. Nate and the monkey lived happily ever after. I do not have the monkey here with me in the apartment, unfortunately, <laughs> or fortunately. So, same thing, Ben FSJ. We have our collection of experiences. Nate had been to India once before, once before December of 2019. That's, the, that's our moment in the past. And then I can ask the question, had he ever met a monkey? Yes, he had. But he had never been to Jaipur before December of 2019. And then we have Zait. Nate had been in India for two months. Or Nate had been in India since October. So it's the same idea. And then these, these, something that is relevant to the past moment. Here, it's a lot simpler than with the present perfects, with the open situation and the, the, um, and the effect is now. Here, it really just has to be relevant to our past moment, to, to, for example, the picture here. So, for example, the moment the picture was taken is our past moment, and I can say the monkey had just jumped onto Nate's shoulder, or Nate had already eaten lunch, or the monkey had not yet eaten lunch. So this is all relevant to my story about this picture. Um, and I can ask the question, had the monkey eaten lunch yet? So there you go. That's the past perfect. Now, we're running out of time. So this is something that, uh, that um, we'll just have to run through quickly. The past perfect continuous functions very similarly to the present perfect continuous. But again, we have a moment in the past uh, instead of the, the uh, this is something that happened before a moment in the past rather than present moment. So we use it the same as with the other tenses, had been, hadn't been, has she been, and so on. So she had, no, she hadn't, and so on. And we use it the same. So with Zeit, um, something that began in the past, but it is still true at the moment of the story. So for example, when our new boss arrived, I had been working at the company for 15 years. Or with the action, and this is again with action verbs, not stative verbs. So we had been losing customers since the year before our new boss arrived. And again, uh, the second use is commenting on the evidence of past action. So last week, my car broke down. The warning light had been blinking before that. The engine had been making strange noises before the car broke down. All right, so that's past perfect continuous. Now, last thing, we'll just go through this quickly because it's important, modal verbs. This is can and so on. And we'll talk about how to use them in just a second. But it's very, these are very simple. Can, können, we can, he can fly a helicopter, right? We'll, we'll just go through these quickly since we're out of time. Uh, could is könnten or konnten. Would is würden. Should is sollten. Shall is also sollten, but in conversation, we only use shall with questions. So uh, with I or we. So shall I close the window or shall we go? That's the only time we typically use shall in, uh, in, um, in conversation. And you can always use should instead of shall. May is dürfen or mögen. May I come in? May the force be with you. Might, you don't really have in German. This is könnte or eventuell. And must, of course, müssen. And will is werden. So the important thing about these modal verbs is they're really easy to use. There's no he, she, it, das, es, muss, mit, das, geht, das geht nicht hier. It's just I can, you can, he can, she can, it can, we can, you can, they can. Very easy. And the helping verb is the modal verb. So modal verben funktionieren, die helping verbs, und brauchen deshalb keine eigene helping verbs. So she can't, or in British, can't, but I'm American, so I say can't. She can't speak French. Never say don't can. Don't can is bad. Can she speak Russian? Yes, she can. No, she can. So that's it. Those are the modal verbs. And that's it. That's our tense review. Whew. That was a lot of work. Now, if you, need, if you would like to have a copy of, of, uh, of this as a PDF of all these, um, these different tenses, then please send an email to Sebastian Fink at arcanum.de, and he can provide that with you. 
So again, Sebastian Fink at arcanum.de. And again, watch this video again on YouTube and watch the parts that, that, that um, where you still need to, to um, absorb the language a little bit more. All right, so again, use your note cards, write these, the, the, the examples down, write the rules down in a simple way, something that will help you practice this, work it like a muscle, and uh, good luck with your English in the future. So thank you for joining me, and uh, have a great week. Bye-bye.